Good morning, everybody. This is KI7WJP, Eric, Backcountry Amateur Radio. And today I want to share with you the antenna I decided to build. And it's, you know, it's basic, but it is a 40 meter dipole designed to be small and portable. I wanted to have a built in RF choke, and I only need it to handle 10 watts. So the design you're about to see, I made up, but I wanted to be able to tune it at a low elevation. My options for throwing things into trees are pretty low around here. I wanted to use my mast and trekking poles. I also wanted to have something with a low SWR across the band and be able to use multiple modes. Now, I probably won't be doing much digital with this, but if I do, it'll probably need to remain about 5 watts. So I gathered my materials. I'd recommend you pause this here and take a look at that, make sure I did it right. But anyway, I like to use the Bulkhead SO239 connectors. They're easy to mount. Um, and SO239 is nice. I like the threaded um, engagement, partly because in cold weather, if it does freeze, it's easy to break the ice with threads. This is something that comes from the climbing community. Uh, automatic locking, closing, or closing and locking carabiners can ice up the same way the, with condensation. So this isn't something that maybe many people run into but I, I like having that threaded connection most of the time so my ferrite core here i wound six times i took an equal length of that 24 awg wire and wrapped it around the core uh, six times so the six turns and that is essentially my rf choke so you know that plastic thing that sits at the bottom of your duffel bag to kind of make it the bottom kind of flat. That's what I made this winder uh, antenna mount thing out of. I just used some sheet metal shears, some very small ones, because I couldn't cut it with the traditional shears or scissors. Hence, being a prototype, it's not the cleanest looking thing. Um, maybe down the road I can, if this becomes a thing that people want to um, also have, you can see about designing uh, a 3D printed thing. But I, I think that dipoles um, may be not as favorable as in-fed half waves. The dipoles are nice because there's a lot more resonance just by default. And you don't have to have a transformer. Um, having a transformer is, is just, you know, it's extra work in the RF. Uh, there's heat loss. So I just wanted to try having something a little bit simpler. Uh, as far as you know, the mechanics of an antenna. And so building this 40 meter dipole was my objective. Now, because I'm going to have this mounted so close to the ground, I'm hoping to experience some envis. I'd like to have a little bit more regional communication and experience that lower SWR from taking an antenna like this and tuning it for that low elevation. At any rate, uh, what you can see here is I'm just getting ready to mount the ring terminals. And so I tin the ends of my wire and I crimp the ring terminals on and then I go back and I throw some solder down into the crimp of the ring terminal. The idea is to give that some strength, decrease the chances of having the wire pull out. And as you see, this 24 AWG is a little bit overwhelmed by the space of a 30 amp ring terminal. Uh, but that's what I had kicking around. These little screws actually came from a bicycle bottle cage mount. Um, and the nuts were on the receiving side. So that made it easy to... Put this antenna together with the nuts and i use the nuts simply as a reinforcement for attaching the uh the actual antenna wire and i do the same thing with the the crimping and the soldering with the antenna wire to give those the strength and in my tests i've actually shown that it holds up pretty well so i was able to yank pretty hard on those and they're bolstered by the plastic frame so they don't pull on the tour or the um, the choke they don't pull on the wires they don't pull on anything else except for the plastic frame of the winder but 
they do have some strength to them, so that's nice. And after I tune the antenna, I'll go back and add these to the, um, the, the far end of the legs of the antenna. So at this point, you walk, can watch me fumble around with mounting the, uh, the ring terminals and the wires to my plastic frame. I edited out most of the fumbling just to keep it short and simple. But sometimes messing around with these lightweight um, wires, they just kind of go all over the place. And if you look carefully past my left hand in the screen here, it looks like my down coat has a belly button, which is interesting. But uh, anyway, so I just reinforce, uh, set this up and lock those nuts into place. These are actually, I believe they're metric. So there's a three millimeter Allen key or a hex wrench. That's a hex driver, which is really handy to have. And then an eight millimeter nut that went on the, um, the backside. So uh, now you can see this, obviously this is my prototype. It's not the cleanest looking thing, but I have high hopes for it to work the way it's supposed to. And hopefully, hopefully it will hold up my end goal is to create a different kind of enclosure for this antenna, so it's not all exposed. I, uh, the enclosure would itself would be the winder, but yeah, you know, we'll see how it goes. And, I, and I've got to look. Maybe there's something out there like that. But there's something satisfying about building your own antenna. All right, with the legs attached, I start winding it. Um, it is time to get this out in the field and test it. I'm going to be using a nano VNA to locate the center frequency of this antenna and trim it accordingly. I've had really good luck with the nano VNA in tuning other antennas. So stay tuned. The next video will cover the tuning of this antenna. Uh, but just so you get a little teaser, these are my trimmings. That is 32 and 1 quarter inches off of each end. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And if you really would like to, uh, consider supporting the page or the channel on Buy Me a Coffee. Happy trails. Take care, guys.